Today's session might seem like I've wandered a little bit from the Passover and the Lord's Supper, but I think we need to have a, a deep understanding of what Jesus has done for us if we're to really enter meaningfully into celebrating the Lord's Supper. So I want to look a little further at the night of the Passover, the Last Supper. We left it yesterday saying that Jesus had not drunk of the cup of wine, which meant um, God's protection. We're told they went out to the Mount of Olives, which means they had to have crossed the Kidron Valley. Now, if this were Passover day, there would have been a lot of slaughtered lambs. A lot of blood would have been flowing down from the Temple Mount into the valley below. Jesus and his disciples must have walked through some of that blood. And it says he went to Gethsemane. Now, we talk about the Garden of Gethsemane like it was a garden called Gethsemane. Matthew and Mark just say they went to a place called Gethsemane, while John says they went to a garden. We're the ones who've put those together and made a garden of Gethsemane. But in fact, Gethsemane is an olive press. That's what it means. It's the name of an olive press. That night of the Passover was called the night of watching. It went back to their time in Egypt when they waited all night. They didn't know what was going to happen. They trusted God and they put the blood on the doorposts. They didn't know what was coming. And they watched and they waited. And so after the Passover meal, many Jews would spend the rest of the night awake and praying, watching. Jesus took Peter, James and John and he said, watch with me. He went away to pray. He returned an hour later to find them asleep. They just couldn't keep watch. But for Jesus, this time of watching was a distressing time. Interesting that he's at an olive press. And what happens at an olive press is huge pressure, squeezes all the oil out of the olives. Jesus was feeling pressure bearing down on him. Mark says he began he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. He realised that he had not drunk the cup of protection of his father. He was out of the protection of his father. Now his prayer included, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. What was the cup? It was that fifth cup that was never drunk the cup of God's wrath, mentioned in Jeremiah 25. And in Jeremiah 25, it says, take the cup filled with wine of my wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad because of the sword I will send among them. A picture of absolute destruction. Psalm 79, six says, pour out your wrath on the nations who do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name. And Jesus knew that he was about to drink this cup, the full force of God's wrath. And his second prayer was, my father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. And Jesus drank that cup, every drop, so that we don't have to. This was the completion of the Passover. The final cup has been drunk. Jesus had fulfilled all God had promised to his people through all of their history.
precisa não. 